Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The chance of big heavyweight cards happening in the UK this year with crowds has increased exponentially. The UK government announcing that it intends to allow fans back into sporting events in stadiums from October. So there will be pilot events in August and September to confirm whether they can do events in stadiums safely. But for boxing cards, and you can probably think of a few, Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce, the scheduling of Anthony Joshua Kubrat Pulev, Alexander Usyk versus Derek Chisora, those events are likely to go ahead if fans can be there because the promoters weren't willing to run the cards unless they had a crowd present. And even Frank Warren, who had scheduled the Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubois fight for October the 24th, it was a gamble of sorts hoping that crowds would be back because he said they needed to have a crowd present, one for the event, but two for the revenue. And it looks like his gamble is going to pay off, so that could well go ahead because I think there were a number of us who were thinking with a little bit of skepticism that that fight may get in fact pushed back. And hence the reason for scheduling those tune-up fights that Joyce and Dubois have respectively. And I'll come to some Frank Warren comments on that in a moment. But this is a positive signal that big heavyweight cards are going to resume in the United Kingdom very soon. Obviously, we have a no crowd card with Dillian White versus Alexander Povetkin. But apart from that, in terms of the heavyweight cards and the big heavyweight fights, there really wasn't too much on the horizon. So this is a good signal, a good sign for the heavyweight division, and maybe we will get back to something resembling a little bit of normal. But I guess we should just uh, cross our fingers and hope for the best because a lot can change in a couple of months. But in respect of the tune-ups that uh, Joe Joyce and uh, Daniel Dubois are having, Dubois is going to be facing Eric Pfeffer and Joe Joyce is going to be facing Mikhail Wallish. Frank Warren has defended those fights and has uh, sort of scoffed at the suggestion that they are knockover jobs. So telling the Daily Star, if people think these bouts are just tick over jobs for the two heavyweights, then they only need to look at the German's record as an amateur. Uh, and he's referring to Eric Pfeffer here. He won two bronze medals at the World Amateur Championships and competed in two Olympics. Pfeffer has also two wins over 2016 Olympic gold medalist Tony Yoka, the last man to beat Joyce in the ring in the World Series of Boxing over five rounds. Dubois will have to be at his best to stay undefeated and keep the Joyce fight on for October. Yes, these bouts are to keep these two guys busy, but they're no walkovers for them. They are also a real chance for both men to raise their profile to a wider audience ahead of a big pay-per-view night. So Frank Warren has a point to some extent. These couple of fights, Joyce fighting Mikael Wallish and Dubois fighting Eric Pfeffer, they are not complete knockover jobs, but it is a case that Dubois and Joyce, they should win in the first half of the fight. And if they do actually have any trouble, it probably is a bit of a uh, red flag for fans because we would expect these guys to take care of them. FIFA, like a lot of other amateurs, did do some okay thing. FIFA, you know, he did have an okay amateur career, but also the thing is not all amateurs cross over to the pro as well. We've seen plenty of cases where great amateurs haven't translated to the pro game. But Pfeffer is in his 30s. He's 7-0 at the moment. He does have some ability. But Daniel Dubois is one of the blue chip prospects. Should be knocking this guy out in about half a dozen rounds. I mean, if it goes more than that and Dubois still looks good and he controls him with his jab and dominates him overall, Dubois is probably better for the rounds. But most people are expecting he will blast him out inside the distance and well inside the distance. And the same for Joe Joyce. And that's probably, in my view, a more lopsided fight than the Dubois one. And Frank Warren, he is also in his weekly column on his website, reflected on two of the heavyweights that he had on his comeback card. So in respect of uh, young heavyweight David Adelai, who is now 2-0, he says Adelai doubled his win count with a second round stoppage and showed everybody that an exciting new force is emerging. He is certainly an exciting addition to the heavyweight scene and we will keep him busy but he has got a lot to learn and work on, so we won't be putting undue expectations on him 
at this stage. And he also gave an opportunity to a Daniel Dubois sparring partner, Ukrainian Doran Krasmaru. And he says of him, I was happy to be able to give Doran his moment under the lights. Opportunities have been hard to come by for him since he turned over at the same time as Daniel Dubois. But he continues to give it his all in the gym and provides such valuable work for our young heavyweight superstar. And Chris Maru has about four or five times less fights than in Daniel Dubois and if they turn pro at the same time. I guess it shows you the value of having good management and also a good promoter because he can give you opportunities and it sounds like Chris Maru has been struggling. Top ranks promoter Bob Aram says he's hoping to get Tony Yoka to the United States when he can. So he says of Yoka, who has joined a top rank, that's something he has confirmed, but was unable to fight on a card earlier this year. He says an athlete only has a certain number of years in their career, unlike normal people who are not athletes. An athlete's career is limited. Hopefully we will be allowed to bring him here later this year or early next year. In the meantime, he will fight in France. Our deal with him was done, but obviously things are on hold as far as having him fight in the US, but not because anything he has done or because of us. Simon Villilli says he will make Fabio Wardley pay when they meet in the ring on August 1st. So he says that his experience will play a big part in this fight. People keep going on about the guys Fabio has sparred with, but I've been around the block and I've sparred with some of the best lads in the world, and I'm not going to bang on about it. 10 ounce gloves and no headguards, believe me, it's a whole different ball game. It's going to be a big eye opener for him. I've had a look at him, and you can see he's got a bit of talent. He's tricky he's fresh he's going to come and he's going to be fit it's going to be a really good fight but totally disregard my professional career to this point because to be honest with you it's been a total shambles this is where it starts now and unfortunately for fabio this is my coming out party and not his he's not going to see the final bell sorry fabio but you're going to sleep mate and yeah, I guess that's a concerning statement where he says, disregard my career to date because it's been a total shambles. If anything, people will highlight in on that statement and go, well, what can we expect? But Valili, the former cruiserweight, who'll be facing um, Fabio Wardley for the English title, it shapes as a good fight and a good test for Wardley, who is a Dillian White managed um, uh, prospect. And he is a looking like a good talent in the heavyweight division. Valili, who's in his 30s now, he's come up to heavyweight after not being able to make cruiserweight anymore it'll be interesting to see what sort of test he can give Wardley I think people are expecting Wardley to win this one but Valili if he is training hard if he has improved if he's comfortable at the new weight uh, we'll see what happens but I do expect Fabio Wardley to win that one when they get in the ring the Chinese heavyweight Zhang Long Zhang, who is known as the Dragon King, is calling for all comers. He says, I'm the number one heavyweight champ in Asia, here in North America, ready to fight anyone here. So uh, Zhang Long Zhang, he has actually started up a new Instagram page, and it's uh, very entertaining to say the least. All sorts of um, sort of humorous clips on there, sort of intermixed with uh, training clips that also sometimes have some humor. But uh, it's hard to know how to, how to take this guy in, in respect of can we take him seriously because he hasn't fought in a number of years. He claims to be the best. There's obviously been some controversy shrouded sort of over his career. Uh, his record on box rec has been sort of taken down to 18-0. and 0. He's had more fights than that, allegedly, but some of them have been called into question. There have been claims that some never occurred. But with um, Zhang Long Zhang, and there is some fights out there, not a lot of footage on this guy. He is actually an okay boxer, but obviously uh, in his late 30s now, not making a lot happen. But an undefeated, um, I don't want to say prospect because he's uh, approaching 40 years old now, but it's hard to see where he's going and what he's going to do. Perpetually in fights and then those fights never go ahead. It's sort of Christopher Lovejoy-esque actually. I mean, these two guys, it would be good to see them fight because, you know, at the moment you, know, you could sort of say Lovejoy and Zhang, Zhang Long Zhang, it is a case of, you know, are these guys just complete pretenders? I think there is some talent there for these guys, but they've got to prove it to us. 
And rounding out this heavyweight news mashup video, Ajit Kabiel and Yevgenius Lazaridis have weighed in ahead of their fight in Germany. Kabiel was 236.8 pounds on the scale, Lazaridis 255.1. And in respect of Kabiel, that's there or thereabouts in terms of his recent weights from his recent fights, which stretch back, you know, three or four years. He's always around that sort of uh, 234 to 236 mark. And also on the undercard, you have uh, Peter Kederu, who seems to have a late stand-in opponent, Eugene Bushmiller. Uh, Kederu was 239 pounds. Uh, Bushmiller was 213. Also, a third heavyweight fight on the card, Collins Ojal of Kenya facing George Fibich. Uh, Ojal was 230 and Fibich was 248 pounds. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.